This is the Samsung Galaxy S25 FE disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Taking a look at that, we can see a gray rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you don't have to take apart the phone to replace those. There are now 21 Phillips screws which need to be removed. So here we have a look at the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Once the bottom speaker assembly has been removed, we can see that this flex cable connects the main board to the screen, and these two connect the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you can either remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself, giving access to the screen cable, at which point you disconnect the screen cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure to connect the flex cable back to the back of the screen, and reassemble the phone. The second method would be to start from the front and just heat up the front of the screen so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath and pry the old screen off, at which point you disconnect the flex cable from behind the screen, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen while reconnecting the flex cable to the back of the screen. However, that method would be more difficult since there isn't too much room to work with with the length of the flex cable, so it will be more difficult trying to reconnect the flex cable to the back of the screen if you haven't disassembled the rear of the phone. And this is the bottom speaker assembly. The haptic feedback or vibrator motor is built into the speaker assembly itself, behind the speaker. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch which is holding the battery down. The tabs can be peeled off the battery at the marked locations by the arrows which will release the battery and allow you to pull it out. This is the 4,900 milliamp hour battery.
This is the top of your piece speaker assembly. Here's the speaker itself, and there's an antenna board on the corner. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, as well as an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. The main and telephoto camera are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner and the LED flash below that. Taking a look at the other side, we see the camera connectors which can be disconnected by just popping them off, the proximity and ambient light sensor, as well as a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film or pad has been peeled back, we see a thermal pad on top of the RAM which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket, so if you need to replace that, you would have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to carefully cut out the gasket around the camera and pull it out. We can also see the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard top transfer heat. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Taking a look at the subboard, we can see the charger port located here with the red rubber gasket around it, as well as the primary microphone located next to that. The SIM reader is located on the other side. Once the subboard has been removed, we can see a red rubber gasket behind the SIM reader. The fingerprint scanner is located here. To replace that, it can just be pulled out. Here's a better look at that. And the flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. To replace that, just peel it off from the frame and lift up and pull out this metal bracket which is inside of the slit of the frame. As for the buttons themselves, those can be pulled out of the frame. There is also a liquid damage indicator sticker which is a white sticker on the frame which is seated underneath the SIM reader. Now on this phone, if you were to accidentally insert a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.